Behavioral health advocates are concerned over possible deep cuts to state agencies providing mental health and substance abuse services to New Mexico's poor. The legislature seeks a 19% cut to the Human Services Department's Behavioral Health Services Division. They're hoping to shift some of that money over to Medicaid, but the costs of some mental health services that division provides are not in fact covered by Medicaid, Vicki, and according to youth media organization Gen Generation Justice, New Mexico is in a behavioral health crisis. Would you agree with that? I think we are. Mm -hmm. I, I think about the, the many times that your show has discussed this issue. Thank you for saying that. Um, it's endless, Over isn't it? and yeah. over again, mm -hmm. starting even before the closing of all the clinics. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that this is 19% cut is, we should be scared for that. These are people that need behavioral health services, they need substance abuse services, and if they're not going to get it, mm -hmm. they're gonna be in our community using substances, and it's not gonna be good. We talk about crime, we talk about education, we talk about the economy. This is something that's gonna have a direct effect on those things. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what you do when you don't have money. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you do. I mean, reading some of the stuff they're talking yeah. about, you know, we've got the private sector stepping up and we've mm -hmm. got the nonprofit mm -hmm. sector stepping up. Mm -hmm. They have to. Mm -hmm. They have to. Nonprofits are holding it together in the interim. Dan, and what they're do you having think? a tough time holding it together. Absolutely. I mean, the the, the mm -hmm. nonprofits are nonprofits because they're relying on government assistance and grants and programs like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess you know, if they think they're going to automatically go out and, you know, suddenly start charging people for these services, they're crazy. I think mm -hmm. it's a bad move, um, but I think it kind of circles back, Gene. You and I joke all the time the table about who do we pay, mm -hmm. right? Part of the reason they're having to shift this to Medicaid is those are now entitlement programs. You can't say we're going to have to move money around. So you got to stop. Ro you got to start robbing Peter to pay Paul. Mm -hmm. This is a wrong place to look to doing it. Mm -hmm. These are folks that you know. We've talked about this in, in many times in multiple segments. Uh, especially we talk about homeless folks in mm -hmm. Albuquerque mm -hmm. and how we've all talked around this table about how you know I've traveled around with with my work and. Every place has homeless folks. We seem to have a higher number of folks with mental disabilities in Albuquerque than they do in Denver, or LA, or San Francisco. And these are the folks that need this help. And you're right, if we don't provide these services to them, or we make it more difficult. And at the end of the day, you know, regardless of what we say about whether the government should advocate minimum wage or oil and gas drilling, they've got a job to do very few things. Mm -hmm. And I think one of those jobs is to protect people who can't protect themselves. Is 20% too deep, Senator, in these times? Especially, look at it this way. If we, if we don't do it, we're still at par, so to speak. You know what I mean? We're just a little bit behind the curve. 20% would put us way back, it seems to me. What's your thought on that? That's a huge cut, and yeah. I, I agree with Vicki. We, we are in a crisis in terms of behavioral health, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hoping one of the things we can move toward is this, this model of, of behavioral health that includes much you know, larger issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, nutrition, exercise, spiritual life, prayer, meditation, mm -hmm. communication skills, good relationships, all, all that impacts someone's, mm -hmm. uh, someone's behavioral health. We need to, to move toward that. You know, the other thing is that, um, you know, the nonprofits are providing wonderful services. So like Dan says, I mean, we're talking about federal money that comes into the nonprofits, also some state and local money, and then foundational money too. So, I mean, they're gonna step up and do things like uh, the 40 assets. I don't know if you're familiar with the 40 yeah. assets, but, mm -hmm. you know, they go into prisons, people that are, uh, you know, that have addictive behaviors, they teach them the 40 assets that they need to uh, do well in life. Soft skills like uh, how to communicate, uh, soft skills like how to dress appropriately for work, uh, hard skills like uh, delaying gratification and persevering through difficulties and stuff like that. So um, anyway, we're going to see the nonprofit step up. Uh, mm -hmm. we, that's too deep of a cut, and mm -hmm. we really need to address the crisis in a holistic manner, I mm -hmm. think. I appreciate you saying that. As a reminder for folks who may not know of your career, you've been very strong in this of your time in the legislature. You did great work on that, so I appreciate you saying all that. Um, pick up on, on the senator's point there, Martha. You know, instead of going the other, instead of going this direction with cuts, what the senator is proposing, maybe this is a time we look at it from a different point of view and maybe increase some things to help our, our bottom line. Well, here. we definitely need to do that. The mm -hmm. Martinez administration had already wrecked behavioral health before this came along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is a very specious argument to say, well, we're just going to shift some of it to Medicaid. Mm -hmm. Because as you said in the intro, Medicaid doesn't cover some of this stuff. Right. And the Medicaid subsidy is going to start dropping next year not increasing. 
And so that's just sort of like some pie in the sky of their, oh, okay, Medicaid will take care of it, or the nonprofits. Where are these nonprofits? Have they put a budget out there? Here's where we're going to step up and take up 19%? No, because they can't and do what they already do. So we need a more holistic look at this. Otherwise, what we're doing is we're going to increase substance abuse greatly, which is going to feed crime, which is going to feed homelessness. That's right. Exactly right. You know, Please. at the end of the day, Gene, mm -hmm. it's, you know, this is a perfect example of where the legislature should take the time to not look at saying, let's make blanket cuts. I guarantee you there's programs of behavioral health that are not working. Mm -hmm. Don't fund them at all. Move that money to the programs that are successful. Okay. I, am, I have always been opposed to these 10% across the board cuts. Mm -hmm. We're going to fund something that doesn't work at 90% and we're going to cut the things that are working by, by 10%. They ought to take a hard look at this. And I'd like to see them say, you know, when we go into these programs, if we're going to have to cut more than 8%, come up with a number. Mm -hmm. Come up with a number that's palatable, say then we're going to have to do a real means test to find out what is working. Because let's fund the things that are working because mm -hmm. that's the goal. Senator, that's, that argument's been out there for a while in the legislature, hasn't it? I mean, it, you, you, are, you, you know, dealt with this a lot as, as well. You know? I mean, it's a very, very good point. I mean, we mm -hmm. have this conversation around our dinner table all the time. I have uh, my daughter's a nurse, my, uh, anyway, family's in behavioral health, my mm -hmm. wife works at a pharmacy. We have these conversations all the time. What is working? What is working? Because honestly, feedback from the grassroots, a lot of waste, a lot of stuff that's not working. I mean, we're spending millions and millions of dollars on personnel and programs that don't uh, show us any outcomes. Right. So, but how do we do that? Yeah. How do we look at the whole system and create an accountability metric mm -hmm. that lets us spend money where we need to and take the money away from programs that aren't working? That's mm -hmm. a million dollar question. Unfortunately, that's not a part of the discussion that we're having on the state level. Mm -hmm. And that way of doing it exists. You, you go out and talk to these nonprofits. You go out and talk to companies like Altamira, Adelante. Right. They've survived 20, 30 years because they know what works. That's right. They've been able to go yeah. back and get the grants. You know, you got to remember that most of these people, when they get a grant, the first thing they got to do is set, I think it's 10% aside to do a, a basic assessment and say how we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think the roadmap exists. The problem is, is that we lump the successful people in with these. And in my opinion, a lot of the unsuccessful programs are the government-run programs, mm -hmm. the state programs. We lump them in with these nonprofits. That the reality is, we ought to step back and go to the people that have had a successful career, um, you know, that have done this, and say, "Tell us why you're successful." Right. Sometimes the answers. I know it's hard to believe that I'm going to say this. Sometimes the answers to these problems isn't always in Santa Fe with the government. Sometimes it's out in the streets with the nonprofits, where the rubber meets the road. And working every day. I love that. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have. Join us online. This group is going to discuss the controversial return to work bill that could, could increase the number of police officers here in New Mexico. I'm Gene Grant. Thanks for joining us this week for New Mexico in Focus. We'd like to take this time to say goodbye to a longtime panelist, Rob Nikoleski, who will be relocating very soon to San Diego and starting a new job. Thank you, Rob, for your years of insightful opinion, and we wish you the best of luck. Now, as a parting gift, here's one of our favorite quotable quotes from Mr. Nikoleski, spoken last year about a scandal in the Albuquerque Public Schools administration. This whole rollout makes Winston Brooks look like Winston Churchill. I mean, this is really bad. <laughs> Tip of the microphone, Rob, knock him dead in San Diego. And as always, we appreciate your time and effort to stay informed and engaged. We'll see you next week in Focus. Get a preview of what's coming up on the next New Mexico in Focus. It's easy. Sign up for our weekly email at newmexicoinfocus.org.